No matter what you look up on Google, one of the top search results is always the Wikipedia page for the topic, the fake online encyclopedia, an integral part to the liberal media industrial complex, there to do damage control for the topic. So, for example, if you're investigating what the liberals are obviously doing to the children these days, the top search result, what a surprise, is the ADL doing damage control. The second search result, there it is, the Wikipedia page, which claims that it's just a conspiracy theory. It's the LGBT grooming conspiracy theory. It's not happening at all. Since the early 2020s, conservatives and members of the far right, those Nazis in the United States, have falsely accused LGBT people, as well as their allies and progressives in general, of systematically using LGBT positive education, that's what they're calling it, and campaigns as a method of child grooming. These accusations and conspiracy theories are characterized by experts as baseless, homophobic, transphobic, and examples of a moral panic. It's just a conspiracy theory, they say, from those pesky Proud Boys, right? Drag Queen Storytime started at the request of library regulars. It was a hit, but it also has its critics. There was a protest over the program in October outside the Montrose Library branch. There was a lawsuit which was dismissed. But then the library revealed this man, Albert Garza, a registered sex offender, was among those participating. He served time for aggravated sexual assault of an eight-year-old in 2008. Gee, I can't imagine why he was participating in the Drag Queen Story Hour event there with the children. He must have just wanted to educate them. Just like this Drag Queen Story Hour reader in the Pittsburgh area who goes by the name Anastasia Diamond, who was arrested for... Well, you could just read that headline for yourself. And I would be utterly shocked if we don't see similar headlines in the future about this individual who is the creepiest person I think that I have ever seen on the internet in my entire life. If you need a family, you can come hang out with me. They may not see the real you, but that does not mean that you're not real. I love you very much. What? I'm gonna go cry. <laughs> With love. Wikipedia also claims that cultural Marxism, which is the leftist tactic of applying critical theory to a society in order to undermine the culture, the institutions, the holidays, the traditions, the symbols, that is just a conspiracy theory as well, but not just any conspiracy theory. That's an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. The term cultural Marxism refers to a far-right anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, which claims that Western Marxism is the basis of continuing academic and intellectual efforts to subvert Western culture. <laughs> what a crazy idea. That obviously isn't happening. According to Wikipedia, Operation Mockingbird is just an alleged large-scale program of the United States Central Intelligence Agency to manipulate the mainstream media. <laughs> just another conspiracy theory. Move along. Never mind, we actually have the congressional testimony of the Church Committee back in 1975, where the head of the CIA at the time admits to it. I'm not going to play the clip again because regular viewers on my channel have probably seen it numerous times by now, but after that stunning testimony, Rolling Stone magazine published an article written by Carl Bernstein of the Woodward and Bernstein fame who had the Watergate scandal handed to them on a silver platter when they worked for the Washington Post and then just milked that, uh, you know, for the next 50 years. Uh, he wrote an article, to his credit, back in 1977, I think it was, in Rolling Stone titled The CIA and the Media, all about Operation Mockingbird, and said that the church hearing actually covered up the extent of what the CIA was doing with the media. So what we know, what the CIA director admitted, and if you saw that clip, he said he really wanted to talk about it in a closed session that's with members of the committee who have classified um, security clearances. So even back then, before he sold his soul to CNN, and you know, if he couldn't beat them, he joined them and is a mockingbird asset now, complaining about how Donald Trump is undermining democracy every day on CNN for the last, you know, what, six years, seven years now. But before he sold his soul, he admitted that Operation Mockingbird, the extent of it, was covered up 
by corrupt members of the church committee because they didn't want the American people to really realize what was going on. And Congressman Adam Schiff, who was the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee until the Republicans took over the majority uh, because of the midterms, he doesn't want anybody to know what's happening with the FBI and corruption in the intelligence agencies either because there's going to be a new church-style committee investigating them. And so here he is, almost in tears, crying about what it is that they may uncover. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to the Republican Select Subcommittee to investigate deep state conspiracy theories. And if you had any doubt about what this committee is really about, about its true focus, my colleague from Montana just confirmed this is all about deep state nonsense. Republicans claim without merit that this subcommittee will investigate the so-called weaponization of the federal government. But what it's really intended to do is to undermine the legitimate investigation of President Trump's incitement of a violent attack on this building, on this capital, on this citadel of democracy, an investigation that implicates some of the very members of this body who want to sit on that committee. <laughs> he almost cried. The Mueller investigation turned up nothing. The January 6th committee, which investigated him for two years, turned up nothing. And when they thought that they could get him on having supposed classified documents in Mar-a-Lago, well, then it turned out that Joe Biden did the same thing. If you search for Operation Mockingbird on YouTube, which you should definitely do if you haven't seen my previous in-depth reports on it, uh, well, I guess you won't find my videos unless you add my name to the search term. So if you just look up Operation Mockingbird, you'll find some videos on it. This top search result has 106,000 views. 130,000 from Al Jazeera, which is interesting. Al Jazeera must be tagged internally as an authoritative source. And a couple other videos, uh, something about PBS. That's not about Operation Mockingbird. There it is, the clip from the hearing, a three and a half minute clip from C-SPAN. Okay. And that's pretty much it. You have to add my name to the search term. And there it is. 248,000 views from one of my reports two years ago. 25 minute in-depth report. One I did a month ago. 269,000 views. So more views than literally every other video on YouTube about the topic. More views, more watch time. That's basically how videos are ranked in the search if they're not manipulated. Not necessarily based off of views, but how long somebody on average watches a video because then the algorithm knows whether or not they found a quality video if they actually keep watching it for an extended period of time. So my videos, most views, most watch time aren't don't appear in the search results at all. And by the way, you can order this Operation Mockingbird t-shirt from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Like all of my designs, it's available to t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.